right, he hello everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Schneeman, or, uh, or at Schneems. If you came to the lightning talk, you know the, uh, the most important part about me. Um, I'm incredibly, incredibly committed to Ruby. Uh, sadly, she could not come to the conference. <clears throat> Uh, and you will also know that uh, you will also know that Ruby is in fact a uh, is a Python programmer. It's okay, I've gotten over it. Uh, I work for a small company based out of San Francisco that uh, you may have heard of. Uh, it's called Heroku, uh, where they give me uh, some free time and allow me to work on things such as CodeTriage.com, which allows you to get an open source issue in your inbox. Uh, one every single uh, one every single day, or, or I also recently announced um, docsdoctor.org, which is basically the same thing, but with uh, with methods. So if you're looking for documentation, you can get uh, you can get method documentation, a documented method or an undocumented method in your inbox. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit more about me: I uh, I am in the top 50 of the of the Rails contributors, so that kind of makes me a big deal. Um, I do not have any cats in this presentation. This is a photo of my dog. Enjoy. <clears throat> uh, you may have seen a couple people wearing Keep Ruby Weird shirts. Uh, this is a conference that we threw for the first time ever in Austin, Texas. Austin is uh, Keep Austin Weird. And you know what? Like, Ruby is amazing and, uh, and, and dynamic and powerful. And in the, in the spirit of why, we wanted to preserve that. Uh, we also, we got together and we were like, okay, well, you know what, we, we kept Ruby weird in Austin, but at RubyConf, we should also try to keep it a little bit weird. And we were like, what, what, what can we do to keep Ruby weird? Uh, so we were just brainstorming and uh, <clears throat> I, need a, I needed a lot longer segue. So we were, we were brainstorming, and uh, and and we thought uh, perhaps we could uh, we could do the you do the can can you ready ready yeah. okay so so that was the fun part stay here you're not done you're not thank you very much that was wonderful can I get a round of applause. They knowingly volunteered to do this. That's amazingly. That's amazing. Um, what, you, what you do not know is you have also volunteered to the, do the conference can-can. So uh, can I get you to all stand up? You have to stay weird. Everyone. So the, the conference can-can is similar to the actual can-can, except um, you can't do this. Uh, so it's more kind of like a uh, pretend you're just like a really like shy person doing the can-can. Uh, and we ha and we have um, we have some actual uh, some actual music that is perhaps a little bit better than mine. So you all ready? And and it's kind of you you do a sort of knee step kick. But, but really, like knee, knee. Yeah, yeah. It's like knee, 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 knee. Um, if if you if you're friendly, grab the person next to you. Um, thank you, thank you very much. But that's not that's not required. All right, you ready for this? This is amazing. By the way. This song goes on for an entire minute. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I hope you, I hope you are fully weirded out now. <clears throat> now that I have your attention, now that you're awake, um, I'd like to talk about algorithms. But before I talk about algorithms, I want to talk about uh, my background. So I, I went to Georgia Tech and I studied mechanical engineering. Um, I don't have a uh, CS degree, and I've been teaching myself programming for about the last eight years, which it's been like super fun and super amazing. But computer science is like crazy boring. I don't know if you know this. If you have a CS degree, it's it's all right. Um, I find programming really, really interesting because I like building things. I like actually making and putting my hands on, uh, on parts of systems and, and seeing how they move. 
but uh, the CS students might know something that the, uh, the, the, the mechanical engineers of the world um, haven't quite touched on, which is uh, algorithms are absolutely beautiful. Like, d just unbelievably beautiful. Uh, and it's not because, oh, they come from a book or you have to learn them to pass this test, because algorithms solve problems. They solve real world problems that uh, someone else has invested time into, into learning. So I have a really big problem, and that is spelling. I cannot spell at all, which is why I'm a programmer, because if I misspell my variable name, as long as I consistently misspell it, it's okay. I'm only like half joking on that one. Um, so, and, and spelling even becomes more difficult when you're tired or distracted, and uh, like all the time, I'll do something along the lines of like git commit, and then and gets like, yeah, that's not a real command. Uh, and something else that git does, which is really cool, it's like, hey, what you actually probably meant was commit, and that's that that, that was amazing. And one day, I was like, hey, how does git know? Uh, so, so the method through which Git determines this is something called edge distance. And edge distance is going to be the cost to change one word into another. Um, the, 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 less, the less that costs to change one word into another, the more likely that those, uh, that is what you meant. If there's zero cost, then it is the exact same word. Uh, and a, a quick example, from zat to bat, this would be a cost of one or zzat to bat would be a cost of two. So that, that kind of makes sense. Um, but how would we go about coding it? Uh, when, when, I, when I first found out about this, I was like, oh, hey, that's like probably really simple, and I can, I can do that. And I sat down at my editor and, uh, and just kind of banged out this, like, I don't know, five lines, something. Um, I was like, hey, distance between two strings. And when I, when I ran it with this really simple, uh, simple use case, I got that the cost was one. Basically, all we're doing is iterating over each uh, character in one of the strings and checking to see if it matches the exact same spot in the other string. It's super simple. Like, that, that made sense to me. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'm done. And the talk is over. Uh, but you may have guessed the talk is not over. Uh, it wasn't perfect. And if I put in something a little bit more complicated, maybe things that uh, didn't have uh, the, the same length, then we would get a really high cost. And this is not correct. It does, it does not take seven edits to change the word Saturday into Sunday. Uh, so uh, it turns out that in my naivety, I accidentally recreated a thing that actually exists and is actually useful. It's called hamming distance. Uh, and uh, Hamming distance is not edge distance, it's known as um, signal distance. And it will measure the errors introduced in a string, and it's actually only valid for strings of the same length. Uh, it, is, it is really useful, but only not for spelling. It's horrible for spelling. Don't use it for spelling. Um, if you happen to be in the telecommunications industry and you're dealing with, let's say, strings of, uh, like, you know, well, it's essentially strings of ones and zeros, then you can say, okay, well, this is the likely match of, of this set of strings if we can detect that there was an error. So it's really bad for misspelled words. Uh, and the reason for that is it only includes substitution. It does not include inserting a character or deleting a character. So I would like to introduce another algorithm uh, called Levenstein distance. Uh, in order to figure out Levenstein distance, we have to figure out how do, how do we uh, figure out those extra deletion and insertion. So if we look at two strings that are really similar, we can see here that schneems and, and z schneems is almost a match, except for this first character. So basically, if everything except for the first character on our second string is a match, then that's a really good candidate for deletion. That's saying, yes, we should delete that. Uh, and this is what that would look like in actual Ruby code. If, if those match, then we delete. Um, for insertion, we can, we can do a similar thought experiment where we have just one character missing. So schneems and I don't think the other word is actually pronounceable. Sh schmms. Sh okay. Yeah, that, that was good. Uh, and if we knock out the first character of the first word, then, oh, okay, we can solve this via an insertion. And here's the code about how we do that. With substitution, we already looked at that. And, uh, and that's basically saying every single character matches except for the, the, the one that you're currently on. And um, 
Yeah, so we're only looking at the, at the first character in that string. Whenever we put all of these rules together, uh, we can calculate distance. Uh, if, if you pretended that we already had a distance measurement between different strings, we could uh, calculate the, uh, the distance between strings of different lengths. And it would, if, uh, if you have an empty string and a string, the, the cost to change between those two is gonna be the length of that string. So that intrinsically makes sense. Um, nothing to foo costs three characters. Foo to nothing also costs three characters. We can represent that in code by just checking the length uh, or returning the length if the string is empty. Once we have this piece, we can calculate the different distance between every single substring and uh, do it using the, the same logic we did before where we're gonna call that distance measurement and we're gonna, we're gonna either knock off the first character for, uh, for one of them, we're gonna knock off the second character for the other one, or we're gonna, we're gonna not only compare the first characters. And this represents uh, deletion, insertion, and then substitution. We're gonna go ahead and calculate all of those and we're gonna take the minimum cost because we only wanna make the minimum number of edits. Uh, and then we're gonna add one. So why did we add one? In this case, uh, the, the, the cheapest operation just, just represents which one we should be picking, but adding one to that represents the actual cost of the operation. Okay, that, that covers all of our cases except for when all of the characters match. Um, and uh, so that's fairly straightforward. Again, you just look at that individual character and when we combine all of these things together, we, uh, we form, of course, not, not Voltron, uh, we form recursive Levenstein distance, uh, which is amazing and really useful. It, uh, it's, it's incredibly simple, and uh, it looks a little something like this. It's actually not that much longer than, than the other one. Each of the individual rules, if you look back at, the, uh, at, the previous, at what, what I previously talked about, uh, vaguely kind of makes sense if you just sort of pretend that the, the distance measurement um, method already works. So here we go. I, when, I, when, when I looked into this, I found this, I was like, okay, hey, we're done. Uh, I put in Saturday and Sunday, and it turns out that, hey, the distance, it only takes three edits to change Saturday into Sunday. It's much better than seven. <clears throat> then I was like, hey, what, what does this actually look like when it runs? And so I kind of uh, hooked it up all together. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, we're still going. We're still going. Okay, uh, so that took 1,000... 647 comparisons, and then you can see that the distance was three. So we got the correct distance, but like it took a really long time in order to run that. Uh, by the way, all of these scripts are on github.com slash schneems slash going the distance. Um, I think I also have a, I have a bit.ly URL that might be a little easier to remember. I have that later. But so if, if we look at this, the, the, the measurement before the hamming distance, which I didn't know it was called hamming, I just called it dirty distance. Uh, that took eight comparisons. Recursive took 1,647. Uh, it's like, which would you rather have, fast and wrong or like really long and correct? Uh, that's not something you can, you can, you can, you can, really, uh, you can really reason about. So it turns out that there, <clears throat> that there is a better way to do this, that there is, we can do, we can do slightly better. And, uh, one of the keys to this is if you watch the recursive algorithm closely enough, you'll notice that a lot of those strings that it was comparing were the same. So, you know, we can, we could, we can cache those in, in some sort of a way. And uh, basically, if we have the distance of all of the substrings in a string, then we can add those up and, and get the distance of the entire string. Uh, so, so first of all, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to invite you to join the club. I don't know if you know this, but uh, there's a very prestigious club for members only. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and when you're in the members only club, you can also learn how, uh, how the, uh, the, the Levenstein distance calculated with a matrix works, which is what we're going to go into right now. All right. Uh, the, we're gonna stick with the same example. Uh, going with an empty string over to Saturday, we can build a matrix that, that looks like this. So we have our empty string on the, the up and down axis and we're gonna have Saturday on the top. If we just 
convert empty string into s, it costs one. SA is two, SAT is three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. So that, that hopefully makes a little bit of sense. We can look at it at the other way and say, what does it cost to turn Sunday into, into an empty string? We form the other side of our axis, and we have uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five. So six. So it costs six edits to turn Sunday into an empty string. We have to delete six characters in order to get it into an empty string. So that would be, that would be the, the distance. Uh, once we have this, we have the, the starting point of our matrix. We don't need to, we don't need to, to really calculate this. We, this is kind of like the zeroth law of, um, of edit distance. So we're gonna go back to those rules that we looked at previously, and we're gonna break it down. How much does it cost to change an S to an S? Well, in, 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 intrinsically, we can say that, um, okay, it, it is the same thing, so that there is gonna be no, uh, no edit distance and it's gonna be a cost of zero. Um, with insertion, we can say, obviously, if we wanna change S to SA, we're gonna be adding the A, so that's gonna cost one. That's gonna cost one extra character. <clears throat> and so we would add one into our matrix. And, and we need to be able to do this, though, programmatically. It's, it's relatively, well, potentially relatively simple for people to do it, uh, but we're gonna go back to those rules. So, Again, if, um, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be knocking off the first character of one of our strings, and the way we can do that in a matrix is actually by using the, the row index and the column index as a, uh, as a pointer to, to the string that we're looking at. So we're looking at S, and then we're looking at A, and, but we want to knock off that last character to see, if, uh, to, see, to see if they match, and the cost of doing that would be, uh, would be a one and then, uh, and then, of course, we add plus one to it. And that would represent the cost of doing an insertion right here. So it would, it would be zero plus one, which happens to be one, which is exactly what we thought previously, which it's always really good when you're program programming an algorithm and, and your algorithm like pr produces results that you expect, generally. Um, okay, so we're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep going. In this case, there are no extra characters. It's gonna just all be insertion. So we, can, we, we go over and over and over again, and we end up just adding uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, on to the end of our matrix. Our next character is gonna be changing SU into S. <clears throat> does, does anybody, can anybody guess the action of this? Changing SU into S. Deletion, okay, good, again. This is, uh, this is something we can intuit, but we have to be able to figure out how to, how to tell our, our machine. Previously, we looked at, at some code where we, we knock off the first character um, of, the, of the second string, and again, we're gonna, we're gonna look in our matrix, and uh, our column index this time is gonna be S, the, the, the row index is gonna be U, we're gonna bump it up by one, and that gives us our initial cost that we can then add one onto. So it, it's gonna be a cost of one. This covers insertion, this covers in deletion. Uh, we also have to co cover substitution. Uh, you probably see where this is going before. You've already seen these equations. Um, and we get to our matrix, we find our rows, we find our columns, and in this case, we, we go back on each of them. And this, this is exactly the same. Uh, substituting, so substituting A for U is exactly the same as saying, um, did our previous set of strings match? Because if they matched, then we, then we, should, then we should substitute them. So that, that hopefully makes a little bit of sense. We add one, and that covers all of our, um, all of our processes of determining insertion, deletion, and substitution. I did kind of gloss over match. Match is basically just minus one, minus one, where, where we look at, uh, at the previous one. It's um, similar to insertion, except we don't add one, because there is no cost to change a string to itself. Uh, so essentially, changing an S to an S as the is the same as changing nothing to nothing, which would be a cost of zero. So uh, one, once we have all of these things in place, we can put them together, and we, we end up with something essentially like this. It's gonna, we're gonna iterate over all of the characters in one of our strings, 
and we are going to, uh, to store the values in, in a matrix. And you can see here highlighted in yellow all of our, all of our different, uh, all of our, our different cases. Granted, if you were going to code this for performance, you probably wouldn't want to allocate a hash, but that's a different, that's a different story. Uh, when we do this, we then iterate, we can run it, and you get kind of something that sort of looks like this. It just goes. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so you can, you can see the final cost of changing Saturday into Sunday was three. One of, the, one of the coolest things about this method is that we can also get the cost of all of our substrings. We've already calculated them. If we, if we were interested, we could find the cost of uh, sun to sat. We just look in our matrix, we, we pull the n, because that's the last character, and the t, and we find out that the cost would be two. Uh, was this better than recursive? It, uh, it took a net of 48 iterations, which in my personal opinion is a little better than 1,647. Um, it, is a, it is a little, uh, a little memory intensive. Uh, and both of these examples that you can feel free to play around with and like actually iterate and, and step through and reason about, as well with, uh, with all of my notes for, for, um, for this presentation are on bit.ly slash going the distance if you're ever interested, as well as I'll throw up a couple of, uh, a couple of reference links for the research that I did in, um, in coming up with these. Okay, so this is a tool. Previously I was talking about programming and I was saying algorithms are really cool because they do things and like by now you're like string minus one, plus one, add cost, like blah, 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 like what's gonna be for lunch? Uh, and you haven't seen it actually in action. Uh, I mentioned previously I'm a horrible speller. I, uh, I happen to be human and I get, I get often tired uh, and machines do not understand me very well when I get tired. So one day while I was tri typing, I was typing Rails generate migration, but it was really something that was like migratoon, and it totally just blew up in my face, and I was super upset, uh, and I was like stressed, and it was the simplest task known to mankind, like why could I uh, not possibly do this? Like it, it just, things were not working, I was upset. I don't even know where this came from. Like, who made this? It's amazing. Uh, so I, want, I was saying, why can't more software, why can't the software that I'm using be more like Git? <clears throat> we know what you're trying to accomplish. We know you're trying to run a generator command. Like, we know the generator command's available. Why can't we be a little bit more helpful? Uh, so I submitted a, a pull request, request where we use Levenstein distance. We then... Um, uh, basically, whenever we detect that you have an error, we, we compare the command that you gave us to all of the possible commands using Levenstein distance. It's relatively, it's quick enough. Uh, and then we recommend the smallest possible distance. Um, so again, this is, this is also similar to what Google does. If you've ever typed something into Google <clears throat> and misspelled it, it will give you a spelling suggestion. So this is really neat. Peter Norvig uh, has a great, uh, great paper online where he talks about how Google implemented the first, uh, the first spelling suggestion. And uh, basically, Google, in addition, in, a, in addition to the Levenstein distance stuff that we talked about, they slurped in a lot of real-world books. And in these books, they calculated or they, they, they counted words. Every single word, every single time a word came up, they counted it. So the, the word A probably came up like a ton. And they're like, A is probably a real word. V is probably a, a real word. Smorgasbord is totally made up because we didn't find it in any of these books. Like, you know, or dragon flesh or something. <clears throat> so uh, the, the higher the count of that word, the higher the probability that it's going to get in there. Uh, once we have this information, we can also get the edit distance between the input that you gave it and the dictionary that we have. The, the, the lower the edit distance, the higher the probability, and then put that all together, boom, we show a suggestion. Uh, I, also, Google's really smart, and they totally cheat about this. Um, 
like running, originally running 11 shine distance uh, uh, across all of those would probably not return in whatever point something something seconds with network lag. Uh, so they cache the correct, uh, the correct spelling suggestions. What basically like show you a spelling suggestion and then you click on it, they're like, ha, gotcha. That's what you actually wanted. And if most people search for that thing and also click on that spelling suggestion, then they know that that's probably, probably the right one. Uh, a, another really cool thing that actually came out uh, re relatively recently is the did you mean gem. Have, has anybody seen this? All right, so uh, if you add the did you mean gem to your gem file, it will uh, give you a really cool error. Um, like if you, if you call, yeah, user logged in, it's like, you know what? This method doesn't have a user logged in. It basically catches uh, no method errors and finds all of the methods on that on that uh, object and, and runs Levenshine distance across all of them and then suggests a method f uh, for you to use. Probably don't use this in production. <clears throat> uh, so this is, this is really cool. Like this, this stuff, it wasn't just like in a textbook and I was like, uh, people are bored and professors are like trying to make your life horrible. Like th this is applicable actual things. Um, you, can, uh, you, you can add it uh, in, in like, this just came out. Somebody just thought of this. Um, like, what else can you add it to? Like, there's a ton of CLI commands. Like, yes, it's very specific. It's uh, generally in, in dealing with, uh, with misspellings. But as programmers, we, we spell and misspell a lot of things. We type a lot of things. Um, there are a ton of applications, I'm sure, uh, that we could add this to. In, in, uh, in preparing for this talk and uh, doing, doing research, there, like, it was, originally I was like, oh, like, I'm gonna do all the distance measurements. And that's like saying, I'm gonna do a talk on all the algorithms, uh, because there's a lot of them. Um, so we talked about Levenstein distance, and we talked about Hamming distance. Uh, there's, like, longest common subsequence distance. There's Manhattan distance, tree distance. Uh, and uh, there's also uh, Jero, Jaro, Jero, Jero Winkler distance, which is, uh, nowadays, what I've been told, uh, most people who, if you're doing large, massive amounts of, uh, of spelling suggestions, uh, would, would actually use instead of, uh, instead of Levenstein. Uh, it, you, and you can, you can get really creative. Uh, if you're, if you're going to be doing this often and, and frequent enough, uh, like, you know, Google had to bootstrap at one point in time those spelling suggestions. Uh, they can do things like uh, store the distance edit <clears throat> calculations or the, 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 the count in a, like, in a try so that you can easily just give it all of your characters and it'll give you back a, uh, a list of possible spelling suggestions. So uh, this is kind of just, uh, just, just scraping the surface of, of, all, of those, uh, all of those measurements. But like really at the end of the day, I, hopefully you're gonna, you're gonna walk away and be like algorithms, like not just for CS uh, undergrads anymore. Uh, like they're they're really cool. There's a lot that we can learn from them. And uh, if if you're interested in in learning more, uh, just uh, general about algorithms, like Wikipedia has an absolute ton of of, of stuff. Um, Rosetta Code is great. If you're not familiar with this project, it will actually they will pick common algorithms and implement that algorithm in a bunch of different languages. Though uh, the 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 Ruby version of Levenstein distance was like so not Ruby code. It was like obviously not written by a Ruby programmer. Um, I felt free to like fix that a little bit. Uh, or honestly, the best way to, to, to learn more about algorithms, uh, and my personal recommendation is to give an algorithm talk. Uh, like seriously, I, 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 it's probably gonna happen as soon as we open up this uh, for questions. Somebody's gonna be like, hey, did you hear about like this algorithm? And I'm like, no, and that's amazing, and we should talk about this. Um, and, and, and algorithms are essentially these, these ways of, of sharing knowledge, and they explore how, uh, how, how we can do things and do them efficiently. Um, so this is the anti-penultimate slide, uh, which I've been informed means the third from the last. Uh, and this is basically a nonsensical slide. <clears throat> so does anybody have any questions? 
Okay, cool. Uh, well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be around. All of this code is um, is is online. Like, I highly recommend going out and playing with it. Actually, exploring. All of my notes are on that uh, Ruby gem or on that uh, on that GitHub repo. And if you wait, maybe like five minutes, I'm gonna actually push up a bunch of links to the README that uh, that help explain where a lot of uh, a lot of my source material came from. So, uh, thank you very much for coming. And yeah, have a great day.